Welcome back to another video tutorial. I'm Athenas and this is Mode Bespoke. For today's tutorial, we're going to be working on this iris lace stitch that is worked in Tunisian crochet. So let's get started. So for today, I'm going to teach you how to crochet this lace and I call this the iris lace. This is what I know it as um, because it looks like the iris stitch in regular crochet. So let's get started with this. This one is worked in multiples of four plus two. That means you're going to chain just in multiples of four. So one, two, three, four, and then again, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, until you get the length that you want for your chain. And then at the end, you're going to add two additional chains. So to make a chain, you're going to start with a slip knot. We're going to wrap the yarn around two fingers so that we have a loop. And you're just going to pass this yarn through the loop and tighten your knot by pulling on the two threads right below. So these two little threads of yarn. We we'll just insert our hook, tighten up our knot, and we're ready to begin. So like I said, you're going to be working in multiples of four plus two. So to make a chain, you are going to yarn over. So that's going to go right behind your hook. Pull this top loop through this bottom loop and there's a chain. Yarn over, pull this top one through this bottom one, there's two, yarn over, pull through for three, yarn over, pull through for four. So continue to count one through four until you make the chain at the length that you want. I'm just going to make a short one so it's going to be 12. So we have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So once we've got this, this is a multiples of four, and now we add two additional stitches. So it's one and two. Now we have to do a foundation row. So for a foundation row, we're going to begin on the second stitch from your hook. So skip the first one, go into the second one, and we need to cast on. So to cast on, you're going to insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, and pull your hook out. So you've pulled up a loop onto your hook. So that's one. Go into the stitch right next to it and do the same. Insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, and pull up a loop for two. Insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, and pull up a loop for three. Continue until you have cast on a stitch for every one of the stitches on your hook. So I've got very few stitches left here. So it's one and the last one. And there we go. So once you have cast on and you have a loop on, on your hook for every loop of the chain, we're ready to begin a return pass. This return, the first return pass is just, it's just a traditional return pass, and this is for our foundation row only, because this stitch is created by working your return pass in a very particular manner. So the return pass for this stitch is very different than most of our other stitches that we've worked on so far. So this very first return pass, we're gonna do yarn over. And pull through one. So this loop, pass it through one loop on your hook. So yarn over, pull through one. The rest of the row you're going to work. Yarn over, pull through two. So that's one, two. And then yarn over, pull through two. One, two. Pull those two quickly. So yarn over, pull through two. One, two. Yarn over and pull through two. One, two. Continue doing this until you are left with just one loop on your hook. And this is just a traditional return pass. So once you've done this, you've completed your, your foundation row, you're ready to begin. So we're going to begin the first stitch. We're going to skip the first vertical post and we're going to go right into that second one. So here are all our little vertical posts. Each of these vertical posts is made up of two threads. So it's got this front thread and then this bottom one, or loops, or whatever you want to call them, we're going to insert a hook in between both of those to create a knit stitch. So insert your hook in between these two threads that make up the stitch, go all the way to the back, you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull up a loop. So that's one. So we've cast on one knit stitch. We're going to cast on another one. So here's the stitch. Insert your hook in between both threads, yarn over and pull up a loop and that's two. 
So you're going to cast on a knit stitch for every stitch of the row. If you're not familiar with how to crochet a knit stitch or I'm moving a little too quickly, I do have a Tunisian 101 course where we go through the knit stitch in depth. I'll link it right up here. So go check that out, give it a little bit of a practice, and then come back and try this stitch again. Okay, so once you reach the end, we have to cast on one more stitch here for this last stitch of the row, so it's this one right there. And I like to go through, here we go, behind both of the threads that make up the stitch, where you just yarn over and cast on. So there we go. We have cast on, and we're ready to move on to the first um, return pass of the stitch. So this one is different than the traditional return pass. So for this one, we're going to chain three. So yarn over and chain one, yarn over, chain two, yarn over, chain three. And now we're going to yarn over and pull through five loops. So yarn over and pull through one, two, three, four, five. So now we chain four. So we go one, two, three, four, and then we're going to yarn over and pull through five. So yarn over and pull through one, two, three, four, and five. So I'll zoom in a little bit more. And now we chain four. So one, two, three, four, and then we yarn over and pull through five. So yarn over and we do one, two, three, here we go, four and five. So you're going to be left with two loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and pull through both of those loops. And that is the return pass. So that you're going to return, you're going to repeat, sorry, that return pass throughout the length of your work. So for this next one, so for when we cast on, you're going to go into this little space right here. You're going to insert your hook and you're going to pull up a loop. So there's one. The next loop we're going to use is the stitch right above this little group of four. So there's a stitch right up here on top. That's where you're gonna insert your hook and pull up a loop. So I'll show you this one again. Now oh, here, I'll show you on this one. This first one's just a little more difficult to see, but there you go. So here's that little group of four. Right up on top, there's that stitch. All right, so now for the next one, you chained four, but one of the chains was to close this stitch and then your chain actually has three stitches in it. So you're gonna crochet one, or you're gonna pull up a loop for every one of the three stitches on the chain. So you got one, two, three. That'll bring you to this next little group of stitches. So we're gonna pull up a loop on top here. So that's one. And now we have a chain again. So here's a little chain. We're gonna pull up a loop for each of the one, each of the three stitches. So we have one, two, three, brings you back to the next group. So you pull up a loop for that one. Now this last one is gonna be just a little bit different. So there is this tiny, tiny stitch right here. We're gonna crochet into that one. So you're gonna pull up, pull up a loop there and then in the next two stitches, so you're going to pull up three loops total. So that was one, two, three, and it's going to leave you with just one little chain. We're going to leave that one. So we go, we have completely cast on. Now we're ready to begin the next row. So now before we begin, at the beginning of the row, you notice that we're going to do a chain three. I like to do a chain three instead of a chain four so that it keeps my work even, so it'll keep nice clean edges instead of kind of making them a little wavy. So I found that when I chain four at the beginning of the row, it just, or at the beginning of the return pass really, it, it just makes this edge really wavy and then this one is straight. So give it a try. Um, if you would prefer to do a chain four, try that for a few rows and then go back to chain three, see which one you like best. But I'm gonna start the row with a chain three. So I've got one, two, three. Now I yarn over and pull through five. So yarn over, pull through one, two, three, four, five. Chain four. One, two, three, 
four, yarn over, pull through five. So one, two, three, four, five. So then we chain four. So that additional chain, so when we did the, when we were casting on and we got to the chain, we only chained, uh, we only cast on for three stitches. If you notice here, we have to close this stitch in order to have a space in which to work in. So that's why we chain four and not three. So when you do that first chain, see it creates a stitch for you to work into later. So that's one, two, three, four. The following three stitches are the ones that you're going to cast on into when we complete the cast on row. Okay, so now we yarn over and we pull through four. So yarn over, or I'm sorry, yarn over and pull through five. So yarn over and pull through one, two, three, four, and five. You're going to be left with the two loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through both of those. And there we go. So that was a second repetition. So that's row two. So see one and two. So now we're going to cast on one more together, and then I'll show you how to do a bind off. So working into this space right here, we're going to insert our hook and pull up a loop. We're going to go into the group of stitches right up here, into that topmost stitch, and pull up a loop. And then we're going to cast on one for each of the three stitches of our chain. So there's one, two, three. And then we're going to cast on a loop right up here. And then three, so one, two, three, one on top of the group, one, and then right, right after this last stitch, right there, we're going to insert a hook into there. And notice I'm only doing that on this last stitch. So that's where I said that if you feel more comfortable with a chain four, it might make it a little easier to work into that last stitch. Um, but I like to do the chain three. So try it out. See which one you like better. So here into that very tiny stitch. And I'm going to pull up one, go into the stitch next to it, two, and then one right next to that, four, three. I'm just going to leave us just that with just one little chain here. And there we go. So once you are done, and you've completed all the rows that you want to complete, you want to make your return pass. This one's going to be a regular return pass, just the traditional. So we're going to yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over two, yarn over two, until you complete the entire row. And then on the next one, you can do you're going to have to try out both and see which one you prefer. So this really depends on your work. So what I normally do with this stitch is I just do a slip stitch bind off. Um, and so the bind off, for those of you that don't know, see these how open these stitches are? We have to close these out. So we do what is called a bind off, and that's just a row of regular crochet. So you're not going to be casting on anymore. You're just going to work a regular crochet stitch all the way across to close off the stitching so that it somewhat matches this bottom part. You can't always get it perfect, but you get pretty close. So for this one, I like to do a slip stitch bind off. You can do a single crochet bind off. So that one's up to you and depending on the look you want for your work. So for this one, I'm going to skip the first stitch, go into the second one, and I'm going to pull up a loop as if I were crocheting a knit stitch. So I'm going to insert the hook in between the, both of the threads of the stitch. And then I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop so that I have two loops. And now I just slip stitch. So I'm going to pull this back loop through this one right here, or the top loop, or through that bottom loop on the hook. And that's one slip stitch. You're going to do the same in the next stitch. So insert your hook in between both of those threads, yarn over, and pull up a loop. And then I'm going to make a slip stitch. So I'm going to pull this top loop through this bottom loop. We're going to pull up a loop, so go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then you're going to pull this top loop through this bottom loop for a slip stitch. And you're going to do that in every stitch of the row. So this is going to close off all of that spacing we have between our stitches. If you wanted to try the single crochet one, what you would do is you insert your hook the same as if you're going to do the slip stitch. So just insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and you would close this stitch like you do any other single crochet. So then you just yarn over, pull through two. 
So I'll do another single crochet with you. So insert the stitch into, or insert the hook, sorry, into the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. And then we're gonna yarn over and pull through both loops. And this is for the single crochet bind off. So I'm just gonna insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through two. So I'll complete the rest of this row as a single crochet, just so you can see the difference between both bind offs. When you get to the last stitch, don't forget the last stitch. It's this little bottom one that's all by itself. So you have two chains right here. Use the bottom one. There you go. And there it is. So that is the bind off. So at the end of my stitching, I like to just do a chain one because it makes a little knot here at the bottom. So I just pull on it and then you cut your yarn, pull it through and you have a nice little knot to hold your stitching. So now here's what the difference in the two bind offs causes. So this one is a little bit bigger. So it really depends on the yarn that you're using and the hook size and everything. So the single crochet tends to open up the work. So I find that it just kind of opens it at the top and leaves it a little bit wider than the bottom. That's why I like to use the slip stitch. The slip stitch does have this little bit at the end, but normally when I crochet something, I do a border around it. So if it's a, a blanket or anything like that, I just do a single crochet border around and I use this stitch right here to create that. So it pulls up on my work and it makes a nice crisp edge without widening up the top part of the work. So give it a try. Let me know which one you prefer, but that is our stitch for today. If you watch more tutorials like these, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I post videos every week. To see the written instructions for this stitch and many other stitches, go check out the website. That's modebespoke.com. There you will also find all of the PDF patterns for all the projects that we've done here on our YouTube channel. If you would like to see any more of my work, you can also follow me on Instagram. Don't forget to like and share if you've enjoyed this video tutorial. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.